Why do you believe staff support is so low for women giving birth in a hospital? And how does this lack of support impact the birth and experience of the mom? Yes. So staff shortages um, in the hospital has definitely been an issue with the retiring boomer population. So like our parents, our mothers, our aunts, and you know, maybe some of our uncles who were nurses are now retiring. And so they're leaving the hospitals. And even the people who are new nurses, they're maybe going into higher levels of nursing like nurse practitioners and opting to not work in the hospital setting and more like outpatient work or office work. Um, and so they're not choosing to be in the hospital so much. And then COVID contributed a lot to that because uh, people were trying to not be in the hospital if they didn't have to be. So they found other ways to, to use their nursing degrees, um, which pushed people out of the hospitals. In addition to the burnout like that people experienced during COVID, and if there are shortages, the people who are there are often burnt out. Like they're fatigued, they're working long hours at a time. Um, and so, how does that affect the mom? Um, you have a greater chance of medical errors when someone is fatigued. They almost kind of lose sight of what they're actually doing. Like you go on autopilot and you might, you know, make the choose the wrong medication or something like that. And so when you have that level of um, like overlooking certain things that could be major because you're tired, then there's more room for error. Not to mention that we are relying more on technology in the hospital setting. For example, I have accompanied people to the hospital who are great candidates for what we call intermittent fetal monitoring. The standard of care in the hospital is something called continuous monitoring. Like you go into the hospital, the first thing they do is they put two straps on, one to measure the contraction, one to measure the baby's heart tones. Um, that is not an evidence-based practice, but if you work in a setting where you have limited staff and you can just strap somebody to a bed and just watch them on a monitor outside the room, then your job is easier. Um, but hospitals should and can allow intermittent monitoring, but that will not happen if the nurse has been there already for 11 hours and she's not trying to come into that room every half hour to listen to your baby. And so they'll say like, oh no, we can't do that for X, Y, Z reason when that's not necessarily the case. And so there's a, there becomes like a heavier reliance on technology and there's like this human disconnect in the hospital experience. And then sometimes the lack of continuity of care because of the staff turn turn around even with the shift change right so you don't see the same person you have to say the same thing over and over again to protect your birth plan so i think that's how staff shortages are affecting people and i want to shout out new jersey where we are right now uh january 8th uh, governor murphy with the inspiration and assistance of his wife first lady uh, tammy murphy passed a legislation helped to pass legislation that mandated hospitals and birth centers to have a policy that includes doula support so they have to, and they have to make it visible now yeah and so now um i guess that kind of offsets some of the staff shortage issues but it also holds more space for the mom to have an advocate on site and saying that we affirm um your choice to do that and we want you to do that and we encourage you to do that um and so i think that, that that's been really groundbreaking legisl legislation for new jersey and i'm hoping that it trickles down to philadelphia